I will call the meeting to order. And I need to get a motion to appoint a chair for tonight's meeting. So moved. Oh, oh you need to. We need to name it. Name her. Name Excuse Liz. Oh, name. And I'd like to nominate Liz to be <laughs> our chairman pro tem here. Thank you, Mr. Carlin. I'll second that. All those in. Nope. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Oh, I should I probably turn not the meeting vote. over. Right. You can. You okay. Can. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Sorry. I'm Liz Filsko. I am chairing tonight's meeting. Um, can we please rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The second item on this evening's agenda is an approval of the agenda. May I have a motion for the approval of tonight's agenda, please? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Lynn. May I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Nick. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the agenda for this evening, please raise your hand or indicate by saying aye. Thank you, that is unanimous. The next item on this evening's agenda is public input and oh. announcement. Do we have any public in input I, or any announcements? No, but I was a little bit asleep at the wheel. We did have uh, something we were gonna try and add. I'm sorry, we can do that under transact other legal business. I think we had a curriculum quote for some materials that have been snuck in. Okay. And I, sorry. That's all right. You've had a long day. So, okay, so. Uh, so, moving on to public input. Sorry I interrupted you, Liz. No, no, no. Don't, no worries. So, wait, under transact other legal business, what was it? A curriculum bid. Curriculum bid, okay. All right, I'll try to remind you. All right, so it seems we have no public input or announcements this evening, and therefore there is nothing to discuss. I'm moving on to the fifth item on this evening's agenda. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of May 3rd, please? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Nick. May I have a I'll second? second it. Thank you, Cindy. Any discussion? All those in favor, please either raise your hand or indicate by saying aye. I'm going to abstain. Okay, so any, um, so approval, any, what's the other word? I can't even think, not approval. Opposed. Any, any opposed, thank you. Seeing none, um, who is abstaining? Because I'm abstaining as well, I was absent. I just want to make sure that wasn't me. It was not me. No, it was me. Okay, all right, so Pam, did you get that? Sorry. Okay, thank you so much. <coughs> Uh, the next item on this evening's agenda is our Wallingford update. Hi everyone, Bill Hall, principal here at Wallingford. Good to see some of you again. And uh, I'm going to introduce some folks with me. Oh, Joan's still coming up. Okay. To my left, we have uh, Wojtek Wierzbicki, third grade teacher, and Aaron Klosheim. I think I said that right? Klosheim. Klosheim. I'm still learning names. Uh, physical educator. And Joan Lutuka is coming up. She's one of our <laughs> interventionists. It looks like we have a couple people who didn't make it. So, Joan, you want to do the whole pre-K through one, or what do you want to do? I'm happy to do that, sure. Okay, perfect. Joan's going to get us started. I will work the slide. <coughs> While he's doing that, I just want to take a second to say thank you for the card. That was very nice of you. Mm -hmm. Although, it gave me a little jolt to actually see my years of service print. <laughs> 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 All right, so I was not prepared to do this, I have to admit. So. Um, we have, I will say that we have been working on um, new 
uh, science-based reading action uh, actions. So uh, through pre-K through, uh, well, many grades, but pre-K through two definitely. And um, in this case, um, Tiffany thought that, uh, and I apologize, I thought on the agenda it said 745 and we might not have, everybody might not have gotten that message. Um, so you can see that by the end of pre-K, children would be able to plausibly represent in writing the first sound in most words in personally meaningful text. And Tiffany has shared throughout the year um, several examples of what she has done and one of them has been using print referencing, print referencing read aloud. So you're usually using, um, um, what is the word? Trade books, so stories that you'd find at a bookstore. Um, and basically looking through them at uh, deciding which vocabulary or information you'd like to uh, work on with your students. And so she did that. And she did that as well as provide an opportunity for play-based learning with print as well. And the, um, the whole district pre-K through two got a boatload of new print rich books um, in K through two. And maybe even later, I just don't know, past that. Also, she worked on writing for authentic, audi authentic audiences and real purposes, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see examples of that, and we'll know, the goal was, they know if the strategy is successful if, when they examine student writing, um, and they are finding that 90 to 100% of four-year-old students meet the aim, or and find that. So here are some examples. There are the trade books, uh, print salient texts. Uh, there's the term I was looking for. And um, she's had photos all year of her, of her students, like keying in on these books that you wouldn't necessarily um, expect kids that age to be reaching for, but they are, they're giving kids rich vocabulary and, um, and beautiful illustrations. And then when the students see it on something, then they basically run with it. And I am not going to know what this, okay, so I will say they wrote, oh, that's right, they came to your class. Do you want to talk about that? Because they did it. They came to you, to your office. I have to be <coughs> Yes, time. so I, I can jump in here. I've been the authentic audience for both of our pre-K groups over the last few weeks. Uh, you can see on the left, that was uh, Miss Stacy's class in the pre-K, was hoping that they could go uh, to the pond nearby. They've been learning about frogs and the life cycle of a frog. And so they, were, they wrote me a little letter here as part of their writing for authentic audiences uh, to ask if they could have my permission to go to the pond. And they have my permission, so now they're working on parent permission and they're gonna go to the pond. Um, Miss Tiffany's class, I received a letter from them as well, and that was an invitation to playtime, uh, which I did take them up on uh, last Thursday, which was wonderful. So, um, yeah, those are just a few writing examples from them. I think we're into kindergarten here. Oh, I'm sorry. You're okay. Uh, I jumped the gun. So, in kindergarten, Shannon Merritt was actually, or uh, has actually been implementing a new approach, and she told you about it in January. She wanted um, kids to meet the, the goal of reading and writing CBC words by the end of the year, and at the beginning of the year, only one kindergarten student knew all 26 letter names and sounds, um, and in the work that they have done this year, using a new approach, which instead of sort of the traditional letter, you know, the letter of the week is, it was a little faster paced and um, so that they, they were able to get through all the letters faster and then could work with that knowledge. And so now at this point, um, nearly all of the students know all 26 letter names and sounds and they're gonna continue, obviously, continue this for the rest of the school year. And on the next slide, 
she's showing uh, three different students and examples of their writing now or recently. So in the first one, she is an example of journal writing and I will help you with this. I was digging a hole and then I got eaten by an earthworm. Uh, but you can see that there are obviously the student is realizing at this, I mean, at barely six or maybe even still five, is knowing the spacing between letters is, um, and these were kids that maybe didn't even know how to make their letters at the beginning of the year. Um, and the first student she makes the note of, he really didn't know how to hold his pencil or her pencil their pencil properly. Um, an example of opinion writing, my favorite animal is the leopard. I like them because they are fast. And her last one is an example of procedure write up writing that went with her, their plant cycle the, uh, unit. And um, basically they're just talking about the directions on how to plant a seed. So that is kindergarten. And now in first grade, we have been working on differentiated instruction based on uh, uh, a, um, uh, using a curriculum uh, book that was written by Dr. Sharon Walpole and also um, the ELMIC uh, program, and I'm sorry, I always forget what that acronym stands for, but different, uh, different teachers and interventionists participated in that class, and then took on a piece of Sharon Walpole's curriculum to focus on, and that was the differentiated phonics instruction. So uh, we didn't start until, I want to say, March maybe, but I'm not 100% sure. And um, so if you look at, in the fall, most of the students were in, were just and these are first grade students, were basically in like, some still didn't know all the letters and so letter sounds. Um, some would, could like, they were understanding letter sounds, but mostly not how to actually use them in reading or writing. And, uh, and then it goes all the way up to, the, on the uh, side, those are all the levels of then it's digress and phonics and vowel teams, um, vowel consonant, silent E. Um, there's one more. Our controlled vowels, so all the different um, categories of basic word reading. And uh, so you can see by this very colorful graphic that at the beginning of the year, most of the kids were in the bottom sections, and by spring, now most of the kids are very, are, are um, I guess the most important thing, none of the kids are in the lowest and red, which you would hope not. And most of the kids are in the, um, in the green, which is the highest level and where you would expect them to be at the end of first grade. And the next steps for K through two would be that in the fall, and you probably already know this, that uh, K through five is going to be uh, using bookworms, which is also written by Dr. Sharon Walpole, and the differentiated instruction that we've been teaching and that other schools also in our district have been sort of piloting is a part of that curriculum. And, um, and it's the different, differentiated phonics instruction, shared reading of grade level text, and then uh, ELA for writing and spelling. We are, several people, including myself, are taking a course this summer to prepare ourselves for implementing that um, in all of the pieces in the fall. And, uh, and then we're, uh, the district itself is going to continue to, par to partner with the network improvement community and, um, and to build our knowledge and expertise of both bookworms and uh, other research-based practices, such as the, um, the one that Shannon was using in kindergarten to help her kindergarten students to be better prepared for first grade and, and uh, to be better readers or to be readers. 
Any so. questions? Yes. I always have questions. Um, I'm curious to know, do we know um, how, like what percentage of our, of our kindergartners did pre-K with us? Ooh. I do not know Good the question. answer. Because I'm basically I'm, I'm, I'm interested <coughs> in, to, yeah, to watch the data to see how impactful, I love pre-K, I love that we have pre-K. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a, what a leg up for our students. Um, you know, what, what we're doing with them is incredible. And I'm, I'm curious to, if we could watch or track um, students who mm -hmm. have gone through the pre-K program versus those who either haven't or have gone, maybe, maybe those who have versus those who haven't, to just prove, you know, show in uh to quantify so with um so the existence of high quality to actually have them have been statistically shown so there's been pretty academic achievement over time for kids in general yep that is why the board many not many maybe what five years ago mm -hmm. chose to uh provide support for aftercare which is a major barrier to working parents being able to bring their kids to a public school pre-k program eliminating that barrier we believe has helped with equity uh don't quote me on the exact statistic but i would say it's roughly 80 percent um of kids in our pre-k programs move on in um 80 percent of the kids in our pre-k programs are are made up of our kindergarten program. So we, you know, like in a typical kindergarten class of 20 kids, there's about four that didn't come to pre-K. Gotcha, okay. Um, now this is the first year that we have really, last year we started with the L network in talking about the connection, the academic connections between pre-K, K, one, two. This is the first year that all of our pre-K teachers have really dive down into this science of literacy work and specific things they can be doing to help kids with pre-academic skills. Awesome. So the data is new, gotcha. uh, but it's astounding. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, John. Good evening. Um, so I'm Wojtek Rizbicki and I teach third grade here. Um, I did share with you in January and just to kind of recap <coughs> that, um, one of the major points was students need support in phonics decoding and fluency um, most of our third graders do receive some sort of services um, whether through an IEP or through interventions with our EST program um, and continuing focus to kind of support that was for third grade to utilize a group model during our ELA block um, focusing on individual needs, filling individual gaps, and um, kind of utilizing tier one and two strategies through MTSS. Okay. So just to update you on that, what we have done in third grade, um, really since January, is really focused on phonics development. Uh, we do that through what we call word work. Um, we pre-assess the students. Um, it's basically a long spelling test, and it starts off at the very basic of phonics, you know, short and long vowel sounds progressing all the way to the more complicated um, elements. Um, so once we pre-assess all the students, we were able to target specific gaps that they needed to fill. Um, so what we then did was, if a student is working on a CH digraph, we would give them a flow sheet, an individualized flow sheet with a list of activities to complete. Um, once they did that, we would assess them on that particular element, um, and they would either move on to the next or get more support in the one that they were currently in. Um, the middle picture shows the data that we keep for every student. So this particular student, um, every line really is another phonics feature that they have progressed through. Um, and then the third picture is, not that you can see it, but it's kind of uh, some examples of, of their activities. Uh, the one all the way on the right is kind of an assessment to see if they're going to move on or get more support in that individual feature. Um, I'll take the next slide, Phil. So also, what we have done is work on vocabulary development. Um, through our PLCs this year, the focus was on early literacy. Um, so what we did in third grade, we have each student with a vocabulary journal, and we pick words based on books that we read or any words that come up that interest the students. Um, what they do with this is they get a dictionary, an actual physical dictionary, 
Um, they look up the meaning of the word, um, they define it, draw a picture, and then the bottom portion is they use it in a sentence. So through our PLC work, we kind of talked about reflective versus expressive vocabulary. Reflective being that they might understand the meaning of the word, but not, might not be able to kind of express what it really means. So to tackle that, when they use the word in a sentence, my expectation is that they are able to explain the meaning of the word to me through that sentence. Um, and those are just some examples of the work that students have done. And I'll take the next slide. So the next steps for third grade, um, keeping data um, through this word work component, we're able to track every student as they progress throughout the year. The benefits of that is we can fill individual gaps. Um, we can use that data um, when making EST referrals or determining whether a student can exit EST um, or remain. Um, also use that information to transition to the next year. So at the end of this year, I'll be sharing this information with a fourth grade teacher um, so she can kind of pick up where we left off and not necessarily start the students you know, from the beginning, but kind of allow them to kind of progress on their individual needs. And I'll take questions if anybody has any. Um, can you go back a, a slide or two? One more. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, what's your first name? Wojtek. Wojtek. Wojta? Wojtek. Sorry, can I see it? I'm hard of hearing. So it's, diff it's different spelling. Oh, Wojtek? It's W-O-J-T-E-K, -E so it's a V-O-Y sign. Wojtek. Wojtek, thank yes. you. I'm sure. going to see it. Okay. So in that middle um, document where you're yeah. tracking, or, so that's you tracking students? So that is, that's myself and our um, support team member. Is it basically like the student met the standard or yeah, met so the target, the learning target? Every specific or? line is an individual phonics element. So it could be, if they start off, one could be short O sounds. Next week it could be short or long A sounds. Um, going to digraphs, blends, um, all the way to word endings. So every line on that sheet <coughs> is a specific feature that that student has progressed through. So over the course of a few months, we're able to see exactly where they are on phonics development as a whole. That's fantastic. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Thank you so much. Thank you. My, turn. my first time seeing you guys, I'm honored to host you in my classroom space yeah. and to uh, be your guest at the meeting. So thank you uh, for both those things. Um, PE, uh, a little different than some of our other classes in that uh, I get all these kids in the whole school and I get them multiple years in a row. Um, so uh, this year, rather than focus on physical skills, which is my job, I, I teach physical skills, uh, both preparing kids for sports programs later in life where hopefully they can learn good life skills from people like Mr. Hall coaching football, uh, but also hopefully gain skills to then uh, just find exercises and activities that they can stay healthy with the rest of their life. Uh, coming out of the pandemic, however, um, I decided to track SEL skills, uh, social emotional learning, because uh, I see a lot of those in PE that don't always show up in the normal classroom uh, because kids get competitive and stuff comes out that you don't always see other places. Uh, so this is a uh, Excel sheet I made for this year. Uh, it's just a way that I can keep track of um, what I do in a class. And this doesn't count the normal teacher stuff of just asking kids to calm down or be quiet. Um, this is bigger behaviors. Uh, if I have to give multiple reminders, kids that are hands-on, uh, et cetera. If you want to go to the next one, Phil. So, uh, sorry, go one more. I get to the next one. So this is one of uh, my classes here at West, one of the younger grades. I know you can't read all the top lines, uh, but I have things like uh, talking just loudly or over me uh, using rude words toward classmates, being hands-on, uh, presenting physical danger to others, uh, whether in a game or not. Um, so every mark or date on there is a time I had to have a conversation with a kid and redirect them toward correct behavior. Um, you can go to the next one. That was first trimester. Uh, this is second trimester, and the next one, third trimester. So there has been improvement throughout the year. Um, I've mainly been just tracking this year, as opposed to doing much with the data, because again, I'll have this class next year. Um, if you want to do one more, Phil? 
So again, each little date represents time that kids are not learning actively, and that might be the whole class because I have to stop class and deal with something, or it might be I have to pull an individual student out uh, that they're then not engaged in, in learning. Um, and again, it's not including your very normal classic teacher redirections. Um, so represents a lot of time. I haven't added it all up yet, uh, but I'm guessing for some grades, that it's close to a whole class throughout the year. You know, 40 minutes is my class time that we've lost to dealing with social emotional uh, behaviors from kids uh, that negatively impact class. Um, so for next year, as I move ahead, um, I think I have a few things. Um, what have I done and what am I going to do? Uh, just spend more time teaching problem solving skills for kids to be able to engage with each other and solve problems calmly without getting angry, without yelling at each other, and creating those bigger uh, dramatic issues. Um, starting class with reminders on how to listen, especially with the younger grades, just what does a good listener look like in instruction. Um, assigning consequences that fit the negative behavior. Um, and then I'm always on the lookout for games and activities that help me teach kids interpersonal skills and how to better interact uh, with each other. So that's what I've been up to this year. And again, because I have the value or the benefit of seeing kids next year, I can plan kind of for the long term and not just hand them off to someone else. But these are things I can enact next year. Any questions? I'm curious as to the rotation. Do all kids have you all year? Do you see all, all K, one, two, three, four, five, six throughout the whole year? I see pre-K to six twice a week for 40 minutes all year long. Yes. To six. Twice a week, great. Yes. The okay. state state mandates oh, good. 40 minutes twice a week. If you guys ever want to up that, <laughs> the students would appreciate okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there are schools that do that around All right. I think it's a fantastic way to spend a different, different outlook on PE, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because you think of it as a way to burn off energy or teamwork or team bonding or listening or hand-eye coordination, but not the social-emotional, which is a whole new spin on time spent together, right? And I think hugely impactful because those are skills that they will use in their other classes. Absolutely. So that transfer, I think, matters a lot. So, yeah. uh, so outside of Wallingford, is this something we do in other schools or is it something it's done statewide, nationwide? What is the... I, I teach at Shrewsbury also because I split. Mm -hmm. So I do, I track the same up at Shrewsbury and yeah. what I do here. I do it there as well as needed. I, I like it. Uh, the state has mm -hmm. quite a few resources, and nationally, and the P curriculum has moved toward SEL skills mm -hmm. pretty in a in a big way. Um, and I know other school. classes. There are a lot of okay. resources out there right now for schools in general. Yeah, I was going to say Tracy. I Tracy's can't tell really you that Tracy that. does exactly what Aaron does, mm -hmm. but I know she she cares as much about. Mm -hmm. uh, the aspect of kids getting along together while they're learning, you know, the teamwork aspect. So, yeah. I think Thank you. You, we clearly have some incredible educators working with our students, not just telling you that everything's peachy, but identifying where their students are having struggles and finding strategies to address those struggles. I think it's, it's we're lucky to have the folks that we have doing that work. And I think it's awesome that you can get that data from them and not just hear me talk about it. So thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, everybody. If I can, before we move on, did you want to take a moment to say anything since we started early? I appreciate you coming in. <coughs> um, I think Joe probably covered it. I'll, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Kathleen Harrington. And I'm an interventionist here at Wallingford, and I split my time in 10 minutes. Um, I'm sure she did a great job just sort of explaining the, um, the, the slides, but we are just really excited about the results that we saw um, and excited for next year to implement the three aspects of the curriculum. We, we focused on the differentiated instruction this year, but to really to go deep and to do all three of the components of Dr. Walpole's um, curriculum is very, very exciting, and we're excited to take the class and learn more about it and just and put it into action. So um, that, that, and to continue our, um, uh, our uh, partnership with the agency of ed and with Dr. Walpole from Delaware, 
and the network improvement community. So it's all very exciting. So I'm sorry, I, I thought it was at 7:45. So we're, we're ahead of schedule. <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Sorry. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> I'm Stacy Frollo, one of the pre-K teachers here. So you probably saw my slides. I don't know if anybody explained them, but I am the. Joan did a great year job. Yes. Into doing the Elnick along with Kathleen. So I started with Nell Duke and now with Dr. Walpole. And do, really focusing on Prince Elliot text, making sure we incorporate it wherever we po possibly can. I've really been focusing on finding nonfiction books because I have a tendency not to be Prince Elliot. So um, an example was some of the bug books because my students are very much into bugs and finding books around that that supported that. Also incorporating um, writing for authentic audiences. So giving the power of not only do we want to encourage them to write a sentence that's meaningful to them in pre at the end of pre-K, but showing them that the writing has a purpose. So one of them was at the end of our gingerbread unit, which was in December, which is incredible three and a half weeks of reading every story possible you can find on gingerbread. And they wanted to make gingerbread, which finally we could because could because it wasn't COVID anymore and they wanted Miss Kim in the kitchen to know that you had to shut the doors you had to shut the windows and you couldn't peek in the oven so it required us to write as a group a note to Miss Kim on how to cook the gingerbread cookies for us and then my students were like really confused about what <laughs> a pond was I was like, well, maybe some, maybe we could go look at a pond. So it got them all talking. So we had to write, Mr. Paul, a letter asking permission if we could go on a field trip to a pond, which we did today because they were very excited to write the note and we got the answer and they were very disappointed that we couldn't go right then and there. So it showed them the power of being able to write mm -hmm. and how meaningful that is when it's an authentic audience so hoping that we can bring that forward as they continue on here at Wallingford it's just been really powerful over the last two years and one of the slides showed um, two of my students who I've had this is their second year and they were waiting for their sixth grade buddy to come in and they were pointing to the speech bubbles trying to figure out what the whale would say on that page so it was just really, I'm just standing back and listening to their conversation. And they're like, no, this is where the whale is saying this. And over here, this is what the, the octopus is saying. So they're seeing what the power of that text means, especially when it's print salient, because it was in a speech bubble and just didn't look like a bunch of squiggles on the paper. So it's been very powerful and very impactful in the pre-K. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next, well, firstly, I want to thank everyone from Wallingford Elementary for coming and sharing the amazing work you're doing with our students tonight. Thank you so much. Um, the next item on our agenda this evening is an update on the boiler room. So uh, if we go back to spring break, Oh yeah. It's been several weeks. Do we yeah. have to? So yeah, <laughs> the weekend of the 15th to 16th, we had a filter housing, which so, some of you may have these in your homes as like a whole house water filter. Uh, uh, some sort of plastic filter housing that unscrews and you can put your filter material in. Uh, the one that was in our boiler room shattered which was really interesting. Uh, Tim, Tim talking with some of the folks, the plumbers, uh, they were surprised to see that happen. So a uh, pretty, pretty interesting thing where, you know, Tim has taken me around and definitely shown me some places and, and said, uh, this is a problem, we need to take care of this. Okay, let's move on that. This is something that was never on anybody's radar. And I think something that, that was pretty surprising that it happened. Uh, because that filter housing shattered, a lot of water came into that boiler room really quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had actually never set foot in that boiler room. It's, uh, if you're looking 
at the middle school wing and we've got our large silo for our wood chips. Mm -hmm. It's a building that, it's, it's a room that's right there on the side of the multi-purpose room and there's no entrance except a little outside door. So if you never really paid too much attention, you never even really see a door to get in there. So that this outside door you open and you go downstairs and there's our boiler room. So it's, it's actually below ground level. Uh, so because of that, it sat and filled up with water for a while. Oh boy. Uh, and really the only indicator that it was filling up with water was when we started to have some electrical problems. Mm. The, the way that boiler room is laid out, there are a lot of electrical panels and, and they're all over the wall. Oh and boy. some of them start about a foot and a half up mm -hmm. from the ground. So to hit a lot of electrical panels, you didn't need to wait too long for, for a pipe pouring all of its water out to start causing a lot of damage. So really it was extensive damage. I think that was the word I used when I, when I sent a note out to the community. It was extensive. Uh, so Tim, Tim on vacation got to work really quickly trying to coordinate with some of our local folks, trying to call in some contractors. Uh, all, all the folks we worked with locally were phenomenal. Uh, they, they jumped and supported us in incredible ways. Uh, so we have a lot to owe to those local folks, um, our local custodial crew. Um, some of them were working that week. So Tim was able to coordinate with them on the ground there while Tim was out of state. Um, so we knew by, by close to the end of the week uh, that we were going to be able to be cleared by the fire marshal for occupancy. And really that was the big, that was the big push that spring break week was to be cleared for occupancy so we wouldn't have to cancel school. <coughs> Uh, we got the things in place that we needed to satisfy inspectors. Uh, it, we did not nearly get close to uh, getting back to where we were before the pipe broke. Uh, so a lot of work on plumbing, a lot of electrical work. Uh, we, were, we were crossing our fingers that certain panels were going to come in from California because we had to order them to get the right equipment in to get things working. Uh, we've got a boiler going for hot water. Uh, that was one big, huge requirement, and we were waiting on that equipment, and we weren't sure what was going to happen. Uh, so we got all of that in place. Uh, we've been working with insurance. Visbit uh, is the group that we work with for school insurance. Stan presented a little bit in the spring around risk management and shared with you a little bit about Visbit. Visbit works with travelers. So actually, we ended up having somebody from Travelers Insurance come out, take photos, uh, assess everything that's going on. Uh, at this point in time, we don't, we don't have any sense that we're going to incur uh, costs that are not going to be covered. So Travelers has told us at this point that send us your bills already. So the emergency things we've put into place have already gone out to insurance. Uh, we didn't want to leave those local, local contractors waiting to be paid. Uh, so we've been moving on that as soon as we had uh, confirmation from insurance that things were going to be covered. So it was a little chilly and we were monitoring temperatures, making sure that we didn't have rooms dropping below 60. 60 was really our threshold that we were gonna say, yeah, we've got a problem, uh, this isn't workable. Uh, we actually had our, our business office was in all that spring break week working. So we were paying attention to how they were doing as they were working in the building and what temperatures were like. Uh, we had some chilly days, absolutely. We're gonna have maybe our last chilly day tomorrow. Uh, we've been making do. Tim had a wonderful um, second thing pop up last weekend, actually Friday going into the weekend. So we had everything in place to be all set to make it through the end of the year while we were waiting on long-term work. And a panel stopped working. So we had replaced all the panels that were not working uh, or there were issues that they were not up to code and we were told we needed to replace them. There were some panels that were still working. 
that cleared inspection and were up to code, uh, one of those panels failed. So Tim was actually working this past Saturday trying to get things back in place to get everything back up to code so that we could continue to have school again. Uh, Tim is probably going to be playing whack-a-mole a little bit oh until we get everything uh, completely done. The timeline on that is pretty long. Uh, the timeline is looking at like mid-August to have everything where it needs to be to be where we were before that April weekend. Uh, insurance is all in good shape. So like I said, we don't, we don't anticipate any, any financial challenges. Uh, Tim's just got a, a fair bit of work to do. Uh, really, a lot of the work is going to be outside vendors and contractors. Uh, Tim was already talking to them that spring wake, break week to get wheels in motion to get some of the bigger pieces replaced, if that makes sense. So where we are now, uh, we've done everything we needed to do to be up to code for occupancy. We had a little bit of a wrinkle with another panel last week and Tim got that all set by the end of the day Saturday and we are still waiting on vendors with some of our more heavy duty equipment that you can't just order. Uh, hopefully having that in place mid-August. Questions? So these are boiler components? And yep, absolutely. Um, our wood chip boiler is actually fairly, uh, that, was, that was new several years ago, and that is not something that many people will even work on. So it's fairly specialized equipment. So not, not a oil boiler that you'd find in every other school in the state maybe. Uh, so I think that's gonna be the more challenging one. Uh, the oil equipment, I don't think is going to be as problematic. That's just more industrial size equipment that we, you know, are going to spend some time getting that completely put back together. But the wood chip boiler might be the one that mid-August. Uh, the good news, if we don't have that set by mid-August, uh, we always have our two systems, the wood chip and the oil. The oil makes a lot of sense when we have the negative 20 morning because the wood chip boiler is not always going to keep up with those temperature swings. So if we don't have that done on that mid-August timeline, we're not out of luck. Uh, the oil we should be able to get in a little more quickly, if that makes sense. So going forward here, yep. your description of yep. the, where this boiler room mm -hmm. is, uh, <clears throat> it's obviously vulnerable to flooding yeah. here. Yeah. Um, is I there think a, any a kind of detector. remedial thing we can do? Yeah. Uh, alarms? Yes. Uh, I think we can, we can absolutely put a alarm in there detecting water level. I mean, if there's any water on the ground, we can, there, there's some pretty, I think, simple enough things that we can put in place that we would just get, we'd get a call if there was water right. before it ever became problematic. An inch of water is probably better than a foot of water. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good question. All right. Are we ready for the next agenda item? I am if there are no other questions. All right. Um, the next agenda item is our board education and strategic planning schedule. So we had put this back on the ad agenda just to touch <coughs> base again and make sure that we were comfortable <coughs> with our next meeting. Uh, we had planned May 31st. That puts us a little off our board schedule, but that allows for Mill River to have a well-timed graduation uh, on June 7th. We can continue with May 31st and we can do a 6 p.m. strategic planning meeting. That's, that's what we've drafted. So tonight we can talk about that and decide if that does still make sense to us or if we want to have a board education topic instead or if we want to push that to a different date. Okay, so like one, two, three. All right, so that's planning. the third Wednesday yeah. of the month. Okay, so did you say 6.30? No, said 6. six. Actually, that's the... Isn't that the fifth Wednesday? 
Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Because it's I'm a funky month. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, One, yeah. two, or three, meeting. four, five. Yeah. I counted wrong. Yeah. Because. You're an English teacher. Well, no, I'm a French teacher. <laughs> no, it's 744 no. on a Wednesday. I'm like, mm. sorry. Okay. Um, it's also on the calendar for seven, which is fine. <laughs> so, yeah. What do folks think? I'm good. I say we leave it May 31st, do strategic mm -hmm. planning. Okay. I mean, that keeps us on schedule. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I agree with that as well. Yeah. I think it might be hard for us to pick a good board education topic too to take the place of it and I, I really do think we need to keep moving with our strategic planning so I Absolutely. appreciate that. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you. We'll get that warned. Okay super. Thank you so much. All right the next item on this evening's agenda is board attendance and I don't know who was planning to leave that. Um, I think it was Matt. Yeah, okay. I think so. Well, in Matt's <laughs> absence, I think we all know that, you know, board service is a very big commitment and we have busy lives and sometimes it's hard to get here. Um, I don't know what Matt planned to say. Um, he's spoken about this previously. It's, I think, I suspect it's probably just a friendly reminder to please, you know, make your best effort to attend as many board meetings as is possible. And if you're unable to attend, please let folks know. That's always very helpful. I think it was both regular board meetings and committee meetings mm -hmm. because I know there was a couple of committees that didn't have. Yes, last week there was quorum. a couple that had didn't have quorum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Like so, for example, fi and we can this can be like an open discussion. Um, finance was has not reorganized yet because um, we've only had one meeting since reorganization, well, since the full board reorganized, but we, we haven't been able to or reorganize that committee yet. Um, what other committees have not been able to reorganize? I don't know if it was I know I think everybody else, did, did B&G do? Yeah, B&G did. Yeah. What about I know. negotiations? Yep. Yeah, negotiations did. So I think, uh, it, I think everybody else got their reorg meetings in but because then i think some of the second meetings, meetings yeah. didn't have well, I, and i know yeah. buildings and grounds was recently can canceled yeah. as was community yeah. engagement so um i would just say c please communicate if you can't make a meeting definitely communicate with pam it is very important that she have agendas in a timely fashion so she can warn meetings and that she know in a timely fashion whether or not a a meeting is going to occur so that if need be she can cancel it um does anybody else have any other comments just, just a question um were those committee meetings scheduled as hybrids or were they in person they were not warned because we didn't have agendas in time okay so we didn't even cross that bridge yet okay that well makes and, sense. and my my only question mm -hmm. um and, and I know this is a direct reflection on me, and so that's fine. Because um, I was down in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Now, if it had been hybrid, mm -hmm. I'd have been able to attend. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, when we have, and, and I am not saying we shouldn't have meetings mm -hmm. at the elementary school. That's mm -hmm. not what I'm saying at all. Mm -hmm. But what, I, I, what I'm asking. I think the intent was them for them to be hybrid. Yeah. I think that was the intent. And, and I, I just, and again, I'm speaking personally. Yeah. So um, I just think it, it, we need to look at the capability of, of having <coughs> hybrid meetings at the elementary schools mm -hmm. as well as mm -hmm. at Mill River. Or yeah. if not hybrid, some hybrid <laughs> of a hybrid. I, you know, I, I think back to when COVID was at, its peak and and we were doing google meets mm -hmm. which you know seemed to help and also provided the communities more input mm -hmm. um to the meetings so i just throw that out there as something to consider something to look at whether it makes a difference in board attendance or not i uh, again i'll speak personally it, it would for me mm -hmm. that's all and I think, thank you for sharing that, Lynn. And I think, you know, one of our takeaways from the COVID era was that, you know, uh, attendance went up, uh, community participation yeah. in the meetings I mean, we had went up. On that screen, yeah. I, I don't know, we had 20 people, not necessarily 
yeah. directly participating, but at least hearing what the board was doing. It's an accessibility issue, I would say. It's an equity issue. Um, it makes our meetings more accessible, yep. which increases it. And I think we access. should pursue. You know, if we're if we're going to be looking at our strategic planning, mm -hmm. that would be a good opportunity to yeah. look at how, and, and we've talked about it in the past, I know we have, uh, increasing community participation. So I just think that's another piece that could be there and it might help board member attendance. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say, because this is coming to mind, Len, as you're sharing that, you know, the challenges of fulfilling mm -hmm. this commitment, because it is a big commitment, yep. that was part of the you know data that drove the conversation of do we need to change the number of committees on which folks are mm -hmm. serving? Do we yep. need to change mm -hmm. the number of meetings that we have on a monthly basis? Um, and I don't know that we did change anything. Um, we talked about the possibility of changing some things, but I don't know that we did. And so perhaps we do need to circle back to that to say, you know, can folks make two meetings um, a month? You know, should we look to change the way we structure our committee, yep. the frequency of our committee they can, meetings? Or consolidate committee meeting. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I mean, yes. We, consolidate. We, if you have committee overlap, yes, you can achieve two <coughs> goals at the same time. Right. Right. And Merging. that was one of the Merging. things. We talked about it, but it was streamlining. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things we were supposed to mm -hmm. that we talked about in the reorg, but. Mm -hmm. Didn't. I think Liz hit the nail on the head. We didn't do it. We just talked we about talked it. We talked about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. No, so you're right. the evidence informs us that that perhaps we need to circle back to that discussion. And that can go in that strategic planning. I think that's yeah. what we're looking at. Yeah. And so, I think and I think that makes tons of sense for strategic planning because that is the board talking about the board's goals. Yeah. And how how can we better accomplish our goals? Yes. Um, the, mm -hmm. If attendance is challenging for whatever reason, you know, having the hybrid option makes it easier for some folks. You know, that's a great way to accomplish, to, to eliminate that barrier gets us closer to meeting our goals. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a totally appropriate conversation for and, that. And again, and I suspect <coughs> that what Matt would say is, you know, just communicate with Pam. That's hugely important. Mm -hmm. um, and communicate with, with one another, please. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, we are on to committee reports. So personnel, I believe, Mr. Doucette, that that is you. Yes, that would be me. Sit back, relax, folks. We're going to be here a while. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just wanted to warn you. Um, we have several. We did meet this evening, and we have several contact, contracts that need to be brought before the board for approval. It's that time of the year. Um, so number one. Um, I would make a motion to offer um, a teaching contract as a K through 12 nurse, point for full time equivalency to Joanna Marenga. I think I said that right. Second. Discussion. Which school? She serves the entire district. She is grant funded and she had been full time this year using our ESSER funds to try and support coming out of COVID and the health office being just really behind on, on all their regular stuff that they didn't get to do. So this is kind of a, a phasing out of that extra support. So she's been full time. This is point four. She goes where she's needed to any school. Good and question. The, and the position just to follow up a little bit on that, is grant funded and it's already been funded for it next year. It is approved year. in the grant so yes. we can offer Thank the you. contract. Yep, good point. Yep. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, next, I would make a motion to offer a teaching contract for grades K through six as a reading interventionist to Julia Wyman. And this is also uh, a grant funded position. And this, fun oh, it's not discussion, right? sorry. Second. <laughs> discussion. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. 
Thank you, Len. And that funding is in place um, as well. In place. Okay, yeah. super. Approved already. Great. Yep. Any other questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, next is um, a contract for Edward Edward Robbins as a 712 teacher woodshop 1.0 full-time equivalency um, for next year and I would make that a motion second we do it thanks Cindy discussion huge this thanks huge thanks to the board yeah. the finance committee and the community this was an addition um, and I think something we heard from a lot of folks that was going to be a valuable addition. So thank you. Yeah, I heard that. A, I heard that a lot over the last six months that people are looking forward to Woodshop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll just say that I loved Woodshop, I and I am so lacking in all of those skills. And as an adult, it's really kind of rough. <laughs> it is. So, yep. yeah, excellent. Yep. And Ed has been a science teacher with us. Yep. So. He knows the students, and, and that's also going to be helpful as well. Oh, we got to make a... Yeah, didn't call oh, a question. Oh, I didn't do the whole... Okay, I'm sorry. All those in favor? I'm sorry. <laughs> Opposed? All the excitement got away from you. Yeah, I know. Abstain? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next, offer a special educator contract to Naomi Merrill. And that should be regular educator. Yeah. Sorry, we'll fix okay. that. Classroom no, teacher. Fine. I missed that. <clears throat> and that'll be in Clarendon, right? Yes, Clarendon. And Clarendon. it's for K-1, 1.0 full-time equivalency. So I will make a motion to offer the con uh, educator contract to Naomi Merrill. I'll that. Thanks, Liz. Liz, second that. <laughs> Discussion. Brian, you said you were going to correct that? Yep, we'll get that fixed. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Thank you very much. Okay. I told you to get comfortable. Next mm -hmm. is... Hiring season. Yeah. <laughs> ...is a contract for Beth Oldenburg as a para-educator. And if you look at the contract as it was presented to you, it says special educator, but Brian is going to change that to para educator. For Beth Oldenburg, uh, pre K 1.0 full time equivalency. So I would make that a motion. I'll second that. Thanks, Nick. Discussion. Which school? That's going to be Clarendon. Thank you. Anything else? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Thank you very much. Uh, next is a um, music educator contract for Jennifer DeKalb. Uh, 0.7 full-time equivalency. Um, and I would make that a motion. Thanks, Liz. Shrewsbury and Mill River. <laughs> point five, I think, I think point five Shrewsbury, point two Mill River. Oh. Is that right, Jody? Um, or is it point four? Oh, okay. How much is the Shrewsbury? Five okay. 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 We're okay with that. <laughs> Shrewsbury Mill River. Yes. <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Uh, next is um, I'll make a motion to offer Matthew Merrill a contract as a technology support specialist, 1.0 full time equivalency. And Second. Thank you. <laughs> wow. You're getting competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. I'll just say, I think this is a former student of mine. Could be. I recognize oh. the name. Yep, he's, I'm pretty sure he's local. Okay. Yeah. He's worked, he's done some long-term sub jobs in district too Super. for us. So we Great. definitely know Matt. Cool. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. 
Okay, and now we have some administrator contracts. First is um, an administrator contract for Kim Maneri, two year contract as athletic director, and I would make that a motion. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Thanks, Cindy. Discussion. Um, is it worth noting that uh, personnel today looked at admin evaluations oh. so that we could recommend that contract yeah. for approval today? If you, yeah, let me, that's a good point, Brian, thank you. Some of you may remember <coughs> last year or two years ago, whenever it was, when we were talking about offering administrator contracts, we had seen or heard nothing in terms of evaluations. Mm. And so this year, that's different. And we have legitimate ongoing evaluations for all of our administrators and district staff. Um, and we didn't go into detail, but, but we were able to look at some of the conversations and some of the things that have occurred. Um, in those evaluations. So mm -hmm. when you're seeing the personnel committee um, offer, make an offer of a contract to an, an individual administrator, we, we have seen evaluations. We can't, um, we, we can't make them public obviously because they're, they're personnel issues, but I, I think it's important, and thank you Brian for bringing that up, that, that they are in place, they are taking place, and they are ongoing. And I think that's huge. <laughs> that's great. And I guess, mm -hmm. Brian, as the person ultimately responsible for mm -hmm. everybody's evaluations, yep. how did the process go? I think the process went well. You know, really a lot of it mirrors what we use with our educators. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we have, and if you've seen the superintendent evaluation tool, it mirrors that mm -hmm. too. So yep. looking at, certain areas of growth, looking at a rubric that, that identifies how you're doing in those areas of growth. And we uh, actually, if anything, I think we checked in with our administrators more frequently than we do with our educators. Uh, I would argue that we probably should be doing more with our educators. Uh, so if I was evaluating <coughs> a principal, I met with them every other week. And once a month, we would talk about specific evaluation goals. Once a month, we would talk about how are things going, what do you want to talk about? So at least once a month with every uh, person that I was evaluating, we were checking in on progress uh, against that tool. I think that's super. January, we did a, yeah. a mid-year review. Mm -hmm. And we went line by line to show people, here's where you are today. This is not official, but here's where you are. Mm -hmm. So that in January, folks had a heads up of how things were going. So when we did the summative at the end of April, beginning of March, there, it wasn't a surprise. So folks didn't go, wait, this is my summative? What happened? How come you didn't tell me that I wasn't doing that well? Mm -hmm. You know, those were ongoing conversations. <clears throat> uh, I, think, I think it worked really well because it was focused on growth. Let's set a goal. Let's let's check in on how things are going. Let's talk about supports that you need to be able to do the work, and let's track progress. Mm -hmm. And I could show the personnel committee today where our folks are, and I think that's important. Uh, we only have three admin contracts coming today because our renewal cycle is way off with hiring a bunch of new people <laughs> last year. But we had materials on every single administrator they were all in the process doing that same work, even though we're only bringing three to you today. I don't want to bring the rest of those folks to you next year, and that be a surprise to you. Mm -hmm. So I, want you, I wanted the personnel committee today to see where everybody is so that they know how things are probably going to look next year when those ones come up for renewal there too. Well, and, and later on we're going to ask for yep. approval yep. of contracts. Yep. Um, for oh. admin to 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. to approve their their uh, a raise for their second yeah, their year salary their increase yeah, yeah that's written into their contracts yeah yeah okay so any other discussion 
with the contract for Kim Maneri. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Okay. And thank you, Brian, for that, because I, I really, mm -hmm. I think oh. it's so important. And, and thank you to the board for identifying that last spring as, hey, this is something we need. We need to do better on this and we need to figure this out. You know, if, if you are clear about the things that we need to do better, we will work to do better. Yep. That helps us. Next is um, offer an administrator contract to Jody Stewart Ruck for two years as assistant superintendent. And I will make that a motion. A second thought. Thank you, Liz. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Jody, <laughs> for your service. <clears throat> um, next is a administrative contract for our business manager, Stan Palasic. Palasic. For two years. Thank you, ma'am. Uh huh. I had to practice that quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being in finance, yes. I don't get to do it that much. Um, so I would make that a motion. Sorry. No, second. second. Thank you, Paul. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Okay. We're not done. <clears throat> um, I would like to make a motion to approve contracts for non-union eligible support staff and bus drivers. Second. Thank you. Discussion. Basically, this is, go ahead. And I'll just share that, that their contracts will reflect a 5% raise like our other support staff folks so that that lines up with their compensation next year. <coughs> Any else? All those in favor? Opposed? Um, abstain. Okay. And then we need to do one for... So administrators, one, yeah, uh, admin who are on a two-year contract have a contract that reads that their salary for the second year of their contract shall be in accordance with approved budget allowances. So this year, budget conversation, we had approved the same amount that our teacher contract mm -hmm. has for a raise. So our, our administrators are lined up to have a 4% raise. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two folks that uh, we had hired low. Uh, when you look at everybody's salaries for the, the job that they do, the size of their school, their years of experience, we do have two folks that we brought on low. Mm -hmm. uh, so those folks, we did some work to bring them up a little more than that. Uh, we were still $12,000 under what we budgeted. So that 4% that, that we budgeted, um, where there is some savings there still, if that makes sense. So I think I would make a motion that the fiscal year 24 administrative salaries be approved within the budgeted allowances. I'll second that. Thank you, Liz. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. And again, I, I think it's important that, that we saw evaluations mm -hmm. on all of mm -hmm. the administrators, even those that were, we didn't do a new contract on, but, but we're looking at, you know, are they deserving of a 4% increase for next yeah. year? Um, you, and maybe note that there was one administrator who, who didn't have a raise. That, should that be identified publicly? Because that's not really my job. Just so the public record reflects that. Oh. Oh. So. Because I can't. I can't. That's not my job to bring that. Does that no, make sense? I. Yeah. Sorry. 
No, um, that's okay. I'll figure it out here. Just give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so all of the administrators but one. Yeah. So did, did we already, we should maybe amend that because yeah, that motion we is made not accurate. It, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry about that. Who seconded that? I did. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. How does so, that work? You rescind So you rescind your, your Okay. So second, I'll rescind my second And I'll of rescind that motion. my motion. Thank you. Okay. So now we're back to scratch. Mm -hmm. So, so our, our administrators. Accepting the superintendent. Accepting the superintendent. Yep. Okay. Um, make a motion that the fiscal year 24 salary increase of 4% mm -hmm. for all of our administrators except the superintendent second have been approved within the budgeted allowances second thank you <laughs> I'll second that. so fast i like i can't pam did you get that i got it yep <laughs> good for you cuz i have i don't have a clue <laughs> discussion all those in favor Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I Thank didn't you, want the record to make it sound like I brought my own raise to the no, board. No, that's fine. That's reasonable. And with that, um, our next meeting would be scheduled for June 7th um, at 6 o'clock, unless something comes up on May 31st when we're... Oh, graduation. So... Right. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're not going to meet May. <coughs> And I think we'll, yeah, I think we'll probably be okay. Um, we, we may, I think it's a June meeting would be important. Yeah. Just in case we have some hires yep. for July one, though most of our hires are going to be, yeah, we'll have one. Yeah, I think it wouldn't hurt. We, we probably don't need it before July one. Uh, because folks would likely not be starting till August, but I think it wouldn't hurt to approve contracts and not leave folks hanging. June, is yeah. June 14th our next board meeting? I don't After know. After the 31st? Uh, that's a good question. I think it, while the 14th would not be on our schedule, I think it makes sense because that's the last week of school for students. Mm -hmm. I think the 14th makes more sense than the 21st. So if we were going to just juggle a little bit more to get through June, uh, I think it would be a reasonable recommendation that we have our May 31st meeting. Mm -hmm. Then we have two weeks, we have our 14th meeting. We could do personnel on the 14th of June then, if that would okay. work for folks. I think the timing of that would be really good for the meeting and for personnel. Because okay. then we could have our Shrewsbury group present and school won't be over. Can I take this opportunity to ask Pam, would you mind um, putting graduation on our on the district mm -hmm. calendar um, so that yeah, folks know when it is. It is June seventh. Mm -hmm. The um, the only other thing we talked about in committee is the superintendent evaluation tool, which I receive many, but not all, but um, I asked the personnel committee and I'll ask board members um, I'm gonna need some help in getting together and going over those vows so I will send out an email um, to everybody and if they are willing to help with that process you're more than welcome the more the merrier and that's, that's hugely important for me because I need that feedback of here are the things that we need to, yep. we need to do differently. And I'd like to wrap that up at the latest July so that, again, I think for Brian it's important. So I have summer to plan. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. yeah. Well, I think I mentioned this to personnel. I didn't just say it now, but having the summer to plan and put an eval si system in place for admin was huge. I couldn't have done that work starting in August. Yeah. So if the board can give me feedback on what is the thing we need to really focus on over the summer, we'll do better on it than if we wait. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm. What was that? On the 14th, is yep. the personnel going to be 6 or 6.30? I'd say 6.30. 
we should. Unless you're thinking a lot of superintendent to Val stuff, 6:30 oh. would be fine for us. I was gonna say, we for do contracts. It let's do it. Let's do it on the 14th at six. Then. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Pam. I appreciate that. <coughs> you're always hmm? reminding Lenny, and Lenny appreciates that. <laughs> um, so with that, I think I'm done. I hope you, Len. I'm done. All right. Will there be, I'm not sure who's on policy, will there be a committee report from the policy committee this evening? Mm. I'm, I actually pulled up to see. Well, we can, I think we had C7 and F28. Do we have it? And I, oh, I know yeah. we have C7 because that was done already. Yeah. Uh, Jody, do you know if we did F28 to get it ready for a first reading? We had tentatively thought we might get to it, but I don't know that we did. That's, That's the, the Federal the Children's Nutrition Wellness. Yeah. Um, no, we did not discuss that one at the last policy meeting. No. Okay. Was that F28? Yeah. Okay. So I think we've only got C7. I would agree with that. Okay. I got F28 too. Yeah. I thought we did. F28. That's the one, the child nutrition one. Yeah, it happened. I thought we talked about it we, at the last meeting. So we had a presentation on that at the last meeting, and we said let's that let's sneak that into policy and get it ahead of some of the other ones. But if policy hasn't had a chance to look at it, uh, we had tentatively put that just in case we went policy through a had looked ton at of, it. We yep. went through a ton of stuff in policy, but this wasn't one of them. Okay. Okay. We put a whole bunch up for to be rescinded rescinded but I think mm -hmm. it'll make next meeting yes okay and then okay. this one for first read c7 yes so is that a motion that needs to be made um, Nick do you want to make that motion? I would love to make that motion I make a motion that c7 uh, go up for its first read and I'll second that great any discussion Seeing none, all those in favor of, what's the word we're using? Move, advancing C7 to a first reading. Raise your hand or indicate by saying aye. Thank you, everybody. Any, what is the word? Why can't I think tonight? Um, anybody opposed? What is it? Opposed. Anyone opposed? Or, okay, I'm, my brain is not, my synapses okay. have stopped okay. firing. Uh, so we'll get this in the Herald, and we'll have C7 for a second read on the 31st. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next committee would be Buildings and Grounds, and let's see. I don't believe you And there met. was no meeting. Okay. Right. All right. Community and engagement, same thing. Okay, no so meeting. community. All right, so we won't be hearing from either Buildings and Grounds or community engagement this evening, but that brings us to finance. So good evening, everyone. I have, let's see if my computer will come alive. I have the following payroll for approval this evening. Uh, dated May 1st, we have regular payroll in the amount of $6,783.51. Dated May 5th, we have regular payroll in the amount of $583,696.18. And dated May 16th, we have regular payroll in the amount of $5,093.16 for a grand total of $595,000. $572.85. For pay orders from the general fund, we have a pay order in the amount of $456,106.94. From our after school program, we have a pay order in the amount of $874.21. From our lunch program, we have a pay order in the amount of $45,313.30. And from our general fund, we have a pay order in the amount of $13,891.54 for a grand total of $516,185.99. From our student activity accounts from Mill River, we have a pay order in the amount of $540.02. And from Wallingford Elementary, we have a pay order in the amount of 
for a total of $874.02 from our student activities account. Um, and I do move that we accept and approve payroll and these pay orders as presented. So I need a second. Second. Thank you, Paul. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Thank you so much. Uh, can we get a motion uh, to, uh, my words aren't working either, a motion to approve our chair pro tem to sign the pay orders? Oh, yeah. Payroll warrants? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? All right, I think I should, can I use your pen because this is like glitter gel? Oh. Yeah. The, the clerk might have questions about glitter gel. Yeah, it's a glitter gel pen. All right, thank you everybody. Um, all right, so the. Did, did you vote? Yeah, or did you yes. abstain? Yes, I abstained. Oh, okay. Um, Lynn, did you second? No, no, he made the motion, I seconded. Okay, yeah. thank you, Cindy. Okay, thank you, everybody. And the next meeting of the Finance Committee is May 25th at 4 p.m. And we do need to reorganize. So hopefully folks can make it. Is that another Monday? That no. is a Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, all right. That is a Thursday. <laughs> Um, I can't multitask, so I'll sign these last. Um, all right, so that concludes the committee reports uh, component of tonight's meeting. We are on to transacting other legal business, and Brian has, have, I know. Thank you, thank you. We do have a bid. curriculum bid. Jody, do you want to talk a little bit about this? I absolutely do. Um, so I'm bringing forward a curriculum bid that is about the. Um, about the bookworms curriculum that you have heard our teachers talk about on multiple occasions um, in their presentations. I do want to start by pointing out that this purchase request uh, is for grant funding that we have already been given. Um, so it is not coming out of local budget. Super. I'll put my phone because so I don't know where I put the papers. Uh, so as a result of uh, the work that our teachers have done in the ELNIC the last two years, we were provided with an additional $80,000 of grant funding through the CCSSO, through the state and the AOE uh, because of their amazing work. So a piece of that grant funding was a site visit that we held last week at Clarendon. I don't know if you guys saw that email that Deborah sent out about that site visit. 14 different districts from around the state traveled to Clarendon Elementary to see the work that our teachers are doing, as well as uh, Dr. Sharon Walpole and five representatives from the AOE. Um, the did feedback. We, was, I'm sorry to interrupt. Did, yeah. did we get press coverage for that? We did not because part of the site visit was being in the classrooms with kiddos. Gotcha. Um, and it was really just about like the professional learning pieces mm -hmm. and the educator sharing. The feedback from that was so great uh, that the AOE has repeatedly contacted us just to thank us uh, for the work that we're doing for kids and for how we represented the work that we have been coordinating with them. Um, so a piece of that work, as you've heard, is educators saying we want to deepen the work we're doing. We see amazing results mm -hmm. and we want to do more. Now, as mentioned, this grant funding did allow us to buy some print salient books, especially at the pre-K level, but in order to fully implement Bookworms, which is an open source free curriculum, uh, we do want to purchase the trade books that are referenced within that curriculum to give our teachers all of the possible resources that they can have to do this. And again, the state has provided us with a specific grant for that. So I brought you three quotes. Um, for the classroom literacy sets, grades K through five, all of the three are research-based uh, and evidence-based. However, I want to make the recommendation that we use Open Up Resources, which are the specific resources to align with the Bookworms curriculum that our teachers are so excited about. And that is a total of $41,873, again, state grant funded. All right, may I go ahead and make a motion that we um, approve uh, 
the request to purchase open up resources. Did I get that right? Yep. In the amount of $41,873 using, um, is it state awarded grant funding? Yes. I'll second that. Any discussion? Go ahead. Uh, just a question. The 41000 does what? Does purchase the books? Is so it's to purchase the, the trade books that go along with this curriculum um, okay. for all of the classrooms in grades K through 5. And that covers all? Covers everything that we need to do this with Fidelity. Okay. And now that, that state grant funding is also going to bring uh, Dr. Walpole back to meet directly with our teachers uh, for a full day in August and then meet remotely with them again for two hours in October. In addition to that, we were able to use a combination of our local funding and the state level funding to allow any one of those teachers to take a five day class specific to this curriculum over the summer if they wanted to. And about 75% of our elementary teachers have signed up for that. Great, thank you. So is this uh, just to clarify Paul's or add to Paul's question is this digital copies hard copies print print, print books the kids like to feel the books mm -hmm. yeah and you know it we easy. use digital stuff as well yeah. I, li I like hard touch it feel it so or let I me mean, add this in the past we've gotten a lot of disposable stuff they use a worksheet throw it away or workbook are these workbooks like that that we have to got, buy again no or is it all so these are these are actual they're trade books they're they're the the literature uh, at each grade level that is referenced in the. And the materials are for the teacher. The materials are free for the teachers. Yeah. So these are these are just the books that go along with the curriculum. I just have a question. Why is it only K through five? Why not K through mm. six? Great question. Mm. So <laughs> thanks, Len. You couldn't have cued me up better. Um, <laughs> K through five is this is how this curriculum is designed. Most curriculum actually runs K-5 and then 6-8, uh, but we still want to support our sixth grade students in the same way. Now, the same researchers that have created this bookworms curriculum that has been, you know, nationally tested and is evidence-based, have a six through eight curriculum uh, that they are in the process of testing they have told us that we can be one of the uh, districts that is beginning that testing with them. Um, so next year, uh, our sixth through eighth grade literacy teachers have agreed to use that curriculum as well. Um, now, <laughs> one of the things that Deborah and I are currently working on is getting all the trade books that we would need for that and uh, we have a little bit of money left in SR2 uh, that Brian did a um, did a revision on so we can use for some curricular materials um, so we're really looking left and right to really give our teachers what they need uh, but we are planning on um, using this curriculum through eighth and the great part about getting in on that ground level is if something's working well we can tell the researcher if something is not working well we can tell the researcher and really be part of that work as well at the same time, we are working on coordinating curriculum for science, K-5 and 6-8, and global citizenship, K-5 through 6-8. So the teachers have done materials review uh, over the last two months of a variety of uh, global citizenship curricula, and I will be back sometime soon uh, because the teachers collaboratively decided on actually a, a K-8 through curriculum because we're just, we're really trying to get to get more of that scaffolded, coordinated the work done because we know that it helps kids to succeed when it gets scaffolded. And, and teachers are asking for resources. So we're, we're asking specifically yeah. for this pace too, which is important. I thought we'd wait another year on social studies and they said, no, 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 we want it now. Um, I have two more questions. Um, is this a competitive grant? Um, so it is, not a competitive grant okay um, and it is what I mean by that is uh, this latest round of grant funding was open to anybody that was a part of the ELNIC so anybody can join the ELNIC anyone who joins the ELNIC has the availability to work with parts of this grant 
That's how we got into it. This additional grant funding came from a surplus from the national level grant and the AOE put out to anyone par a part of the ELNIC. Here is this availability for additional funding if you have research-based practices and a grant proposal for it. Within that group of the ELNIC, we were chosen for this additional funding. Excellent. And my other question is, I'm just wondering, did the AOE do a press release on this award? I, I would like this work in mm. our yeah. local press yeah. um, because this is very exciting. Yeah, I don't know. I will reach out to Lori tomorrow and ask about any press related to this. Super. I will tell you that it, word is getting around in the educational community, but I totally hear you that the wider think, community needs to know what our teachers be, are doing. Right, because, you know, um, I found out, out about the boiler from Nick, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then I saw it in the paper. Um, and That's because my brothers and my father are on the fire department. They're like, hey, just so oh you know. Oh, my gosh, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, say, well, thank you. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I'd really like I think the fire department had it on Facebook really quickly yeah i think it was probably on facebook okay. before i got a phone call okay <laughs> believe it or not this believe is very it or not. Yeah. yeah thank yeah. you i i do have one more question i'm sorry so <laughs> i know that the recommendation is the the open up which i'm completely fine with what is there i mean there's a huge jump in these estimates from 41 to 94 so what is what is Amplify like offering? Is it anything more? Is it the same? Yeah, so that, we, whenever we're going to make a purchase, we have to get three quotes. Um, and so, sometimes we never know what we're gonna get. So this one came in yesterday and Deborah said, holy moly, it's double yeah. the cost. Um, but we put it in, that is a program that does offer like a not free teacher curriculum. And so part of it, you know, uh, Dr. Walpole and her colleagues have decided to put this on open resource for any, um, any school that wants to use. And, and this, that's, that's professors, okay. right? This uh, other one is a company that needs to make money. Mm -hmm. Does that? Yes. <laughs> Got it. Totally get it. <clears throat> All righty. Thank you so much. Um, we are on to agenda building. Oh, we have to vote. We have to oh, yeah. Oh, Call the question. I'm so sorry. Oh, Thank fine. you. Um, all those in favor of um, what you said. Right. My all <laughs> those supporting what I said earlier. <laughs> Please raise your hand or say aye. Thank you, everybody. Um, all right. So we are on to agenda building and I just closed my calendar but is this for the um, 31st. 31st okay so looking at the calendar okay so my question is in looking at the um, timeline mm -hmm. for the board member education strategic planning proposal mm -hmm. uh, June is list well okay May finalizing vision mission values never mind great uh, would folks be comfortable with the 31st being at Mill River Hybrid? Our attendance conversation earlier, we haven't been to Mill River for a while. Um, I think that would support doing the strategic planning at six o'clock before that meeting too. Maybe we could run both of those hybrid if they're both at Mill River. Um, we, could, we could offer our student board members time on that agenda too. Um, and I do I did have an update from Sydney Sydney had reached out and did want to share with the board and I apologize for forgetting about that again too um, that she's been working with mr. Robbins who we approved tonight to uh, work in the woodshop next year mm -hmm. she's been working with mr. Rob Robbins on picnic tables for students to eat lunch oh, outside that's nice. been the project yeah. she had been working on uh, they're slowly getting built which is good news um, and she wanted to thank everybody on the school board for this opportunity being a student board member. She really appreciated that. Great. Thank uh, you. Sorry, I. We should thank her. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Absolutely. And I'm sorry I missed that till the end of the meeting. Uh, we can offer another student update on the 531 meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have a Mill River presentation. Uh, I believe there's some interest in hearing a little bit more about some other aspects of our arts program. We had heard a little at the beginning of the year, so we may be able to hear about Stage 40 and some other programs, uh, if that works. 
Uh, I don't know that we have anything else huge that we need to be looking at. Honestly, I for feel the like 31st. that sounds like a full mm -hmm. okay. schedule. Okay. I know policy is going to take up a 10 minute block, okay. anyways. Okay. Do we have any more um, positions to fill? We have any more yes. positions to uh, Maybe. Yeah. yeah, a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Ed's yeah. position Ed moving over. Um, paraprofessional. Okay. Um, open position. When, when were contracts, I'm sorry to interrupt, when, when are, are contracts due to be signed and returned already? Certified staff, yes. Support staff are due Friday. Okay. Yeah. Because that'll pretty much solidify what we hope mm -hmm. is going to be openings. Are most of our contracts always a two-year? Admin, we've been doing two-year for a while. We used to do three. We used to do some variable. And I think several years back, we just decided to... Just a question of curiosity. Yep. Yeah, one, of, one of the things we did was we tried to, at one point, we tried to stagger them so we weren't looking at replacing a large group of administrators mm -hmm. in, in one year <laughs> best you know best and, laid and plans here, of mice and men right yeah and here we are you know with with several new folks in administration you know and and so it's been hard to sort of regulate that so and and Personally, I like the idea of a two-year contract. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan, of, and this is only me personally. Um, I think three years is too much. I like two years because then it gives you. I always think it from uh, from the administrator's perspective that if I'm doing a good job, then I uh, you'll invite me back. If I'm not doing a good job then you, you need to have the opportunity to get rid of me, <laughs> you know. And well, I, looked and I, at, I looked at the list of our tenure uh, yeah. when we were doing cards. Yeah. We have pretty good tenure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and another re so why not a one-year contract? Because admin are in a slightly different position than our teachers or support staff. Our teachers or support staff, uh, they get a contract renewal every year. Mm -hmm. Um, admin don't necessarily get that contract renewal every year uh, so without without much of anything the board could just go oh we're not going to renew right. um, so admin are in a slightly different position than folks who are under a master agreement so one year yeah, kind they, of they're not they're not represented yeah. by by a union yeah. and so therefore there's every year you're yeah. kind of renegotiating right. uh, in a sense so one year feels very unsafe if that makes sense mm -hmm. people go oh yeah. one year do I need to be looking for a job yeah absolutely all right thank you everybody I think we do do we need to have an executive session no, no. all right so I believe we can adjourn by consensus all right okay. thank you everybody good night everybody thank you 830.